The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in the temple, he found people selling cattle and sheep and the pigeons and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple. Cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and said to the pigeon sellers, take all this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, destroy the sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, Many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all and did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any man. He could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, the temple or the church is a place of worship, even though it is built or made of bricks, stones and cement and concrete, for us the church signifies, symbolizes the place of worship. It is where we conveniently, intimately meet God, converse with God, and experience and encounter the Holy of Holies. And God himself makes his presence felt in temples and in churches. While we all know that God is present everywhere, but there are a few designated places for communal worship and prayer. Especially in our faith, in our Catholic Church, this ordinary bread and wine are changed into the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. Where does it take place? I'm asking a difficult question. Huh? Where does it take place? in the Mass, in the Holy Mass. So therefore, we genuflect, we bow, or express a gesture of respect and honor whenever we enter the church or pass by the Blessed Sacrament. For it is here we experience the living God, the presence of the true, real, living God. And for us, this church means the presence of the true living God. So therefore, for many of us, church plays a very important place in our lives. And many of us have a special attachment and affinity towards a particular church. Can I say, maybe you have a special attachment and affinity to Novena Church? Yes, there are many churches. But in spite of many churches we have, in the city of Singapore or elsewhere, but we have one particular church where we feel attached to, where we feel at home with, 
where we feel drawn to, unless until we go and participate mass in the church or say a prayer in the church, we will not be satisfied. No? True or not? True. Similarly, the people of Israel also had a particular church which was very, very dear to them. Dear to their faith. For the people of Israel, only one church, one temple was very important. They didn't have many churches like we have today. If we miss mass here, we can run there. If we, mass, if we miss mass in the morning, we can go for evening mass. Or if we oversleep, then we can go for late mass in the evening, right? So we have many options. But for the people of Israel, they had only one temple, the temple in Jerusalem. And today in the gospel, we see that Jesus Christ comes to that temple to celebrate the feast of Passover. But what he sees is really disturbed him or annoyed him. Now we see Jesus getting angry. And that gives a justification for us to get angry, right? Hey, even Jesus gets angry, right? All of us get angry. Do the priests get angry? Yes. Do the bishops get angry? Does the Pope get angry? When Jesus gets angry, who are we? All of us get angry, okay. But that doesn't give us excuse to justify our anger. Jesus has a reason for getting angry. So he made a whip out of cord and chased the money changers, the cattle sellers, the sheep. Why? Because they desecrated the temple by a loss of sense of sacred. By turning the temple, the place of worship, into a marketplace. It's very sad today, in many parts of the world, the famous churches and shrines are turned into exhibition centers, tourist attractions, or even shopping complex. It's very sad. And I'm happy to see that here we have not yet turned to a shopping center or exhibition center, right? Still we consider it as place of worship. So a little bit of background to this Jerusalem temple. This Jerusalem temple, as I told you, was very much dear to the faith of the people of Israel. And like we consider going to the Holy Land is something that we are going and experiencing, the first and experience of Jesus' life and ministry. Similarly, for the people of Israel, the Jewish people, worshiping in Jerusalem temple was considered as ultimate honoring of God in their lives. Ultimate honoring of God. If they go to the temple in Jerusalem, that means they have done real worship. And they honored God ultimately. So every year they celebrate the feast of Passover. And people all over the world, from different places, the Jewish people, the people of Israel, were coming to this temple in Jerusalem. Why did they come once in a year to celebrate the feast of the Passover? Remembering what God has done to their forefathers, redeeming them, bringing them out of Egypt. And they celebrate this feast of Passover. How? By offering cattle, by offering sacrifices. We see that in the book of Exodus, in the book of Leviticus. They used to offer cattle, sheep, and pigeons. That was customary for them, tradition for them, ritual for them. So therefore, people all over the world, they used to come and they offered sacrifice of animals. Now, they are coming from far away, from distant lands. So it was pra impractical for them to bring animals from long distance. So therefore, the animals were made available for sale. So people can purchase the animal, the cattle, the sheep, the pigeons, and offer to the Lord. Very easy, right? Business. Good business. It was flourishing business. And secondly, during the time of Passover, they pay the tax, the temple tax, the tithe. So the coins they had was Roman coin. And the Roman coins had pagan gods imprinted on the coins. 
and they disallowed those coins to be offered to the temple because it was unacceptable for the Yahweh. So there used to be money exchange. Today we have money exchange, right? So if you go and give the US dollars, you will get it Singapore dollars, but you need to pay extra tax, right, or commission. The same way, they also made a lot of money because of the money change. And wherever there is money, there is corruption, right? Logic, right? Wherever there is money, there is corruption. Or if there is no corruption, there is a temptation for corruption. So these practices, these practices of selling the cattle and exchanging money became the occasions of sin. And there began the loss of the sense of the sacred among the people. The temple which was built, which was symbolizing the presence of God. Why was the temple so important? What was so special there? Because the temple had the Ark of the Covenant, the Ten Commandments, the Aaron staff, and the manna. But here in the church, here we have the real presence of God. That is the difference between that temple and this church. That temple had the symbolic meaning of the presence of God, but whereas here in the church, we have the living God present in the Eucharist. So therefore, the temple lost meaning and people could not pray and do the worship. And that is why Jesus made a whip of cord and chased them away. Jesus was angry because his father's house was turned into a marketplace. They desecrated the temple by a loss of sense of the sacred. My dear sisters and brothers, this is so true in our lives too. The beginning of the loss of the sense of sacred begins, happens with small things, with the trivial matters, in a subtle and quiet way. Little delays, procrastinations, and relaxations for prayer will make us disinterested in our prayer life. Lack of preparedness and disinterest to participate in the Holy Mass will make us lose interest and the thirst for the Eucharist. Laxity, silence, indifference, intolerance will make us break our relationships. All these things happen in a subtle way. It all begins with sense of relaxation, laxity, and indifferentism, but finally, it will rob us of godly behaviors, and it gives room for ungodly behaviors and habits. So therefore, Jesus today, through today's gospel, he reminds us and he sends us a warning to be careful, to be beware of the danger of the loss of the sense of sacred in our lives. We need to ask a few questions here. Is my worship of God merely becoming external and losing its inner values? My participation in the Mass, in the liturgical celebration? Do I consider the liturgical celebration as mere ritual or obligatory exercises rather than a truly personal experience? These are the questions we need to ask. How are we bringing up our children? Are we feeding the sense of the sacredness in them? Or are we just losing or taking for, God, for granted the presence of God, all our liturgical participations in the Eucharistic celebrations? And secondly, the cleansing of the temple is also the cleansing ourselves of our bodily sins. Human body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So therefore, human body is to be treated with respect, and our human bodies should maintain holiness, for the Spirit dwells in our bodies. We should not expose our human body to sin, 
We should not use our human body to attract others to sinfulness and ungodly behavior. We cannot allow our bodies to be abused and misused for misusing, abusing of our body is misusing and abusing of the spirit that dwells in our body. So therefore, as we come to participate in this Holy Eucharist, listen, let us listen to the voice of God. Let us adhere to the exhortation of our Lord Jesus Christ and develop the sense of sacred in our lives. And the church is not only the sense of sacred place, our body too, our heart too. So let us preserve this sacredness in the church and in our body.